this slide is leading me into my next subject. And this is important. The majority of zygopophyseal joint or facet joint injuries are missed on any imaging. This is very this is a an odd thing for me to say. But what we're leading on to, and any imaging means X-rays, CT scans, MRIs, will not show a lot of the injuries that occur to the facet joint that occur in whiplash. So very important. I'd like to discuss whiplash because it's a fairly common cause of neck pain. It is specific to the neck. So the first, which is important, is that if you look at the neck, but the size of the disc, the relative size of the disc is quite small in the neck, and the facet joint is relatively large. And as I said before, the disc carries 50% of the weight, and the two facet joints carry 50% of the weight together. In the lumbar spine, the disc is large, it carries 85% of the weight, and the facet joints in the lumbar spine only carry 15% of the weight. So problems occurring in the lumbar spine, the, the disc tends to predominate, it tends to be the most common cause of chronic low back pain as a structure. In the neck, the disc and the joint share in the weight carrying capacity and interestingly the overall damage to the joints is a more common cause of chronic neck pain than damage to the discs. So let's now look at what happens in whiplash. Here is a chap sitting in a chair the commonest cause of whiplash is that you are struck from behind by somebody who was bending over and changing the, the music in the car or, dry, or talking on a cell phone or sleep, asleep for some reason and they plow into the back of you. The, this is, these are pictures taken of a model and so it's very, very accurate. And what happens is as you get shunted forwards, you are held by a seat belt. And therefore the movement starts of your body starts to go forward, but because of the seat belt, you, the forward movement is transmitted into an upward movement. From a hundred microseconds into this into after the blow. The movement, because of the, of, the, of the restraining of the seat, seat belt, the movement now is upwards. So the whole body, but in particular the neck, is shooting up. At 120, your neck, which was not restrained, starts shooting backwards, flying backwards. The whole of your body is now going upwards. The neck is flying backwards, this neck movement increases, and even though you have a decent back neck support in the majority of cars, there is still this movement at the top of your neck, which is the, the neck itself flies upwards and the head shoots backwards. Then there's a bounce and you end up bending forward at the end. But the real injury or the real damage occurs at this point and this point here, 160 to 180 microseconds into the blow. And what happens is this. If we look at a normal neck, this is called the inter internal axis of rotation of the neck. So what you have is you have your neck, this is the vertebral body, and this is the articular pillar with a facet joint on each end. So we're looking at this facet joint. As you, as you were to normally, as you put your head back, what happens is the vertebral body rotates around this internal axis of rotation 
and the facet joint rotates back and the the top and this glides the one glides on the other and so you get a smooth movement in the in the joint itself the problem is in whiplash is that as your head starts going back your neck is coming up and what that does is it pushes up the internal axis of rotation so that this vertebra shoots down this one comes in and you get a chisel this one chisels into that at the back of your joint this injury is a very very significant injury but it is microscopic these injuries were seen only on post-mortem in people who had sustained significant whiplash injuries or other types of impact injuries and unfortunately died from the injury on post-mortem what uh, the investigators showed was that there is significant but microscopic damage to the back of the facet joints which involved cracking of the vertebra which involved uh, extensive bruise bone bruising and ripping off of, of parts of the capsule and the ligaments around the joints but when they were imaged using CT scan, MR scan, and X-ray, these changes were actually not seen. And so, what happens at whiplash is that there are two areas in the neck which are damaged. The first is, on the whole, is at C5-6. The reason that C5-6 is damaged more often than the ones above and below it are that it is the most mobile segment in the neck. So C5-6 is going to move more, therefore it's more likely to chisel into the C5, is more likely to chisel into C6. The other area which is particularly prone to damage is between C2 and 3, this joint here. And the reason is that C2 which is this unique, weird shape. C2, big, heavy vertebra, the angle at which the C2-3 joint appears is such that if you were to have trauma coming, uh, uh, you know, increased pressure coming through, this behaves like a root, and all the pressure from the head is it passes straight through that joint, through that joint, and it all ends up impinging on the C2-3 joint. So the C2-3 joint is much more commonly injured than any other joint apart from C5-6. And the incidence of pain arising from the joint, it occurs in 45% of all cases of chronic neck pain, as you have whiplash injury, it rises to 60%. And in high-speed car crashes, in other words, as the impact gets stronger, it may be as high as almost 90% of all significant neck injuries arise from the facet joint. And the way it happens is as I described. If you liked this video and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe below and don't forget to hit the notification button.